So, let's talk about LiDAR. But first, I want you to picture this idea. A college campus where there's fully autonomous shuttles and vehicles. So naturally, the next question you might ask if this were to come about is that how would even cars know where to go or where not to go? Turns out companies like Ford and Google are using LiDAR sensors to map its surroundings and collect range data so it won't, you know, run over people. So to get a better understanding of LiDAR technology, I'm here to take you through a process I was able to map this into this. What is LiDAR? LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. You may have heard of Radar, which is like a distant brother to LiDAR. You see, LiDAR and Radar fall under this umbrella category called Remote Sensing, which is the time technology of obtaining information about a target without having a sensor in direct physical contact, which can then be broken down into two more categories, Active Sensing and Passive Sensing. For Passive Sensing, an example would be your eyesight. Your passively obtaining information from your environment in depth and color. While for active sensing, we're talking about radar or lidar, where we actually emit a photon or wave and obtain information based on the return. Digging deeper into active sensing, here's a diagram showing how active sensing works and how we can use it for my own sensor. Okay, here's the plan. We're gonna need a transmitter. In my case, we're gonna use a laser that's gonna emit photons out to the target bounce off the target and going to be collected by a receiver, which is going to be my Raspberry Pi camera module. All this data is going to be collected into the actual Raspberry Pi and then later processed and analyzed using OpenCV and Python. Awesome, so that's the plan. So next thing to do is build a sensor. Come on! So if I didn't have the innate ability to assemble LiDAR sensors at will, I would 3D print the chassis and also assemble them with epoxy so that it would become one complete rigid unit. So let's look at the sensor more closely, shall we? Here we have the Arduino used simply to power the laser, the camera over here as well as the Raspberry Pi. Towards the back we have a battery pack that powers the Raspberry Pi as well as the Arduino. And we have a little slot to hold our phone to track IMU angles as adjustment on a tripod mount. Something to note is that the laser and the camera are exactly 12 inches apart. This is an important aspect when actually capturing range data. Hmm. But Michael, how does that help with anything? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, when we point our laser at the target, the camera sees the laser on its focal plane. If we then out the number of pixels from the laser point to the center of the frame, we can then find the angle theta from it in relation to the target, and use good old trigonometry to calculate the distance d from the center to the target. Now that we have that figured out, it should be known that with every sensor comes calibration. To do this, I started my sensor setup 10 feet away, and then moved the sensor setup forward 6 inches took an image and kept repeating that process until I had a picture for each increment of 6 inches. I then used the range data equation and calculations to fit the data to the theoretical curve as closely as possible. I also accounted for misalignment in the sensor by applying offset values. Now that we have this proof of concept, we can apply it to a line laser instead, which is nothing more than an assembly of point lasers into a line. This will be used for actual target because it will allow us to collect more data and less time and less hassle. So the target I chose to scan is the statue near the outskirts of University of Maryland's campus next to the Leroy Merritt Art Gallery. It's manageable in size, and I can even scan it from all around. It's a simple base that I'm confident will be picked up by the scan, and the level of detail in the clothes and definition in the body will put our LiDAR sensor to the test. And it'll be interesting to see how much detail we'll actually be able to pick up. So ideally the scan will be done when it gets dark, so the camera can pick up the red line laser a lot better. So next thing to do is wait till nightfall and get to scanning.
Okay, so scanning the front side didn't go so well. There's a street lamp right above the statue that's casting a light that's washing out the laser. And it's making it difficult for the camera to pick it up. I'll have to head out and try this again, but this time I'll have to come up with a way to block the light. I collected a bunch of images, but was done so by adjusting the angle of the tripod. And as you saw, I scanned the back, front, left to right, and had the images organized in their respective folders. To isolate the red line laser from the images, I used an HSV mask. But when I try to isolate them, you find all this noise on the right hand region of the image. So what I did to get rid of the noise is that I wrote a small Python program that would read each image and then go pixel by pixel throughout the image until it bumps into a white pixel. From then on, 30 pixels down, it will black out the rest of the image, which would then only leave the region of interest to be the red line laser part of the image. All right, so once we have the HSV mask applied and filtering done, this code reads through each folder which contains the images for the respective side of the statue, applies the range data equation and IMU angle to calculate the XYZ coordinates of the red line laser in Cartesian space, and then writes all this data to their individual text files. So what better to plot points than to plot them in MATLAB? Now this code reads each of the XYZ coordinate text files and had to assemble the final point cloud by converting the points to polar space. Add either 90, 180, or 270 degrees for the right, back, and left respectively. Then finally add or subtract translations to the points to line them up as best as they can. And this is what it looks like fully assembled and compared side by side with the actual statue. We were able to capture the structure as predicted and to my surprise we were also able to pick up the man holding the mud, cross legs and overall posture. And we have some detail in the woman's skirt and legs as well. And we're also to make out the base but weren't able to pick up the emblem or lettering as well. So in an attempt to get the point cloud to look more like the actual statue, I combined all the text files into one and imported it into MeshLab. And to generate the actual mess, I first found the normal vectors for the points by specifying the number of neighboring points I applied Poisson surface reconstruction to produce the mesh and get rid of the extra surfaces. The last thing I did was to use the vertex attribute feature to eliminate those gaps. So here's the final mesh. So we lost some detail in the base when trying to generate the surfaces. A way to fix this would to have a denser point cloud, but if you were to look at it from far away, I would say it resembles the statue silhouette well. That's it. I had an awesome time with this project and I have to thank Dr. Mitchell from the University of Maryland for teaching everything I know about LiDAR. So if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, please see my email in the description below and thanks for watching.